this energy crisis in Europe, and the question is, how will it affect us here at home? Up to 60% of the factories in Great Britain may have to shut down in the next six months. In Germany, they're talking about a 200% increase in electricity. Uh, in Czechoslov in the Czech Republic, 70,000 people filled the public square in Prague. Why? They were protesting over higher energy costs. You've seen a farmer's revolt in the Netherlands. The Sri Lankan government has collapsed. Argentina is on the verge of collapse. The government in Italy has collapsed. And uh, meanwhile, the German government has said this to the German people. We are going to put the Ukrainians first before the interest of the Germans. What does that mean? It means a prolonged conflict between Russia and the Ukraine. And Russia is the leading source of energy uh, for most of Western Europe. The International Atomic Energy Agency announced that the Ukraine, the situation with that Ukraine's nuclear plant, that is supposedly the largest nuclear facility in Europe has suffered damage as part of the Russian-Ukrainian war. Uh, last week, the Russian energy giant announced that it would not recommence uh, European gas deliveries through Nord Stream 1 pipeline. So the question is, is it going to have a dramatic effect, Harry, obviously, in Europe? I mean, Absolutely. But what about the United States? It will drive up demand for natural gas from the United States. And then that will have a knock-on effect in the United States, driving up natural gas prices here. Oil prices may also rise as well because there are, are still a few electric power plants that are powered by uh, oil as well as gas. It seems like the Biden administration is following the European playbook, which means if they do, Secretary Pompeo, that Americans better brace themselves for very high energy costs. Jordan, I actually just got back from Europe. They are paying today about 10 times what the average American is paying to heat their home uh, in the winter or cool their home in the summer. Uh, we're on the cusp of heading down that same path. When you shut down the capacity to produce American energy, simple things like fracking uh, to be able to mine environmentally friendly ways, this is what Europe has done for 10 years. They walked away from nuclear power. They walked away from coal power, and they had no solution. No solution to make sure that affordable energy was available for workers to manufacture and for families to do the simple things like drive the car and take the kids to soccer practice or to church. Uh, we're headed that same way. God bless. I saw Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister Trust today said she was going to allow fracking in the United Kingdom. I think that's a great solution, right? First, help yourself. I wish Governor Hochul in New York would do the same thing, and I wish the Biden administration would stop pushing these woke ESG policies that are denying us the very energy that allowed, has allowed America to be so prosperous for so many years. They have, On one hand, they have this you know, push on the, the green energy, what they call green energy situation, the electrical, uh, electrical ve electric vehicles. And then on the other hand, they're saying basically you can't use them because we don't have the energy to, for you to power them up. It's truly incomprehensible that, that political decision makers tied to this climate change faith, we can all do data and facts. We should all go work to make sure that our environment is safe and our water is clean and our air is safe. Those are good things. Uh, we've been good stewards of the land in places like Kansas where farmers work. But to walk away from the lifeblood that provide food security for America, affordable energy for families, uh, natural gas so that manufacturing in America can stay here and not go someplace else, those are the things that we've just stepped away from. And California has always led the way in this regard. When they set rules on energy, often the rest of the nation follows. And we can see what this is going to mean to ordinary Californians who are simply trying to live their lives and take care of their families. They're going to be told to buy unaffordable cars and then told not to use them.